Hello and welcome to your instant impact report. Congratulations and thank you that you are taking the time and more importantly that you are taking the initiative to seek out for help and to look for answers. As I promised to you, here is your free instant impact report or basically you're now watching the video. And in this instant inst impact report we will help you to instantly have peace of mind, take control, take power back and influence decision making fast if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. It will also help you to position yourself mentally and become mentally strong during this once in a lifetime challenge. Just by doing that and by seeking out for help you stand out from the rest of the families in intensive care and it will give you an edge when dealing with the challenges, difficulties and complexities in intensive care. This free video will help you to find your voice in the jungle of complexities surrounding the critical illness of your loved one in intensive care. This I know that the situation you, your family and your critically loved one are in in intensive care is challenging and difficult. You and your family feel the fear, the anxiety. You know you are in a vulnerable situation. You're feeling overwhelmed, challenged, out of your comfort zone and frustrated. So here's what you get in this free video. You will discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get that crucial behind the scenes insight so that you understand what's really happening in intensive care how you can change your thinking and your behavior that might hold you and your family back to have more control, more power and more influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You'll discover how to control your emotions. I'll show you how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. I'll show you how you can speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. I'll show you how you deal with critical situations and end of life situations effectively. I'll show you how you can manage the rest of your family during this once in a lifetime challenge. Furthermore, in this free video you will discover how you overcome your fears, your frustrations and your struggles in this challenging situation, whilst you will also discover how you need to mentally position yourself and your family well, so that you and your family are mentally strong, so that you can influence decision making, have real power and real control real fast. In essence, the intensive care team is not used to be dealing with families who do their own research and as a result have peace of mind, control, power and influence. If anything, the intensive care team is used to be calling the shots, to drive the bus and therefore drive their own mainly hidden agenda. In this free instant impact video I'll give you the five killer tips and five killer strategies that will immediately set you apart from the rest of the families of critically ill patients in intensive care. Remember, 99% of the families of critically ill patients in intensive care have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence. You can see it in their poor body language body language and poor posture. You can hear it in their weak tone of voice. Implement the strategies I'll show you and you can shift the dynamics in your relationships with the intensive care team straight away. And I'll promise that you will feel like you have peace of mind, control, power and influence in this challenging situation 
irrespective of what your critically ill loved one is going through because most families of critically ill patients in intensive care do feel extremely frustrated, vulnerable, challenged and overwhelmed with this situation they are finding themselves in. This free instant impact video is leading you through the first steps you need to take in order to be impactful, powerful and in control whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. This will also give you and your family tremendous peace of mind. There are many more free and paid resources for you and your family on our intensivecarehotline.com website that will tie right in with this video and that will help you going through this challenging and once in a lifetime journey. You will find links to more free and paid resources on our blog. As you have probably figured out by now, with your loved one being critically ill in intensive care, other people are making decisions for you and for your critically ill loved one in intensive care and other people are in charge. If you have come to the intensivecarehotline.com blog, you are probably seeking for answers. You are seeking for help and you are seeking advice because you are way outside of your comfort zone. You are overwhelmed. You feel vulnerable, you are scared and you are frustrated because your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and other people are driving the bus, so to speak. You may or may not have knowledge about hospitals and about intensive care, but what's really frustrating you the most is that other people are making decisions for you and you may feel like the doctors and the nurses in intensive care are talking over you or at you rather than entering into a genuine dialogue with you. What frustrates you the most is that your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and by the time you are watching this you may still have no clear picture as yet how unwell your critically ill loved one really is and what exactly the future has in store. In more than 15 years intensive care nursing experience in three different countries where I have also worked as a nurse unit manager for five years, I have seen many families of critically ill patients frustrated, vulnerable and overwhelmed with the situation that they and their families find themselves in after their critically ill loved one has been admitted to intensive care. I have personally guided hundreds if not thousands of families of critically ill patients in intensive care through this difficult and challenging situation by encouraging, by empowering, by advocating and by guiding them to control the situation and influence decision making fast. There is very often no immediate help, advocacy or guidance for families of critically ill patients in intensive care. And that's why families often feel overwhelmed. It's why they feel way outside of their comfort zone. It's why they feel frustrated and why they feel left alone or abandoned. There is very little or no advocacy for families of critically ill patients in intensive care and there just simply isn't enough support during this once in a lifetime situation. This free video is designed to help you and your family to get peace of mind, get control, have power and be more influential and help you to get quick insights in what's really happening in intensive care. And our ebooks, reports, videos and audio recordings are designed to help you find balance during this difficult and challenging time in your life. This video is designed to give you a good understanding of what's really happening in intensive care and how it impacts on you, on your family and of course how it impacts on the care and treatment for your critically ill loved one. I know that you often rely on clues of what is said and what is not being said and it can be hard to interpret all the noise of the verbal and the non-verbal things of the intensive care team. 
Therefore, you need a quick intensive care crash course, so to speak, so that you understand how an intensive care unit operates and functions, so that you can quickly get more power, more control, more influence, and of course, peace of mind. Your thinking, your mindset, your reaction, and the presence you have in this challenging, difficult and often heartbreaking situation, more often than not, determines your level of control, your level of power and your level of influence in your, your families and in your critically ill loved one's life. You might say and think that the doctors and the nurses in intensive care are working extremely hard and they may be doing the best for your critically ill loved one and are not questioning their integrity and dedication to their work. IntensiveCareHotline.com's mission is to help you and your family with our free instant impact report and video and other free and paid resources on our website so that you know what you can and what you need to do in order to get your focus of control, focus of power and focus of influence back. You want and you need to be mentally well positioned and mentally strong to be able to deal effectively with whatever this challenging and once in a lifetime situation is throwing at you, at your family and at your critically ill loved one. The intensive care team doesn't often make, t make the time to explain to you and your family what's really going on and they certainly don't want, want to let you look behind the scenes in intensive care. The fact of the matter is, however, that it's behind the scenes where a lot of the decisions are made that the intensive care team then often presents to you as a matter of fact. It's more often than not behind the scenes where the intensive care team is doing the work in how they present and position your critically ill loved ones prognosis and diagnosis that helps to drive the intensive care team's agenda. So let's get into the juice of this video and start with instant impact number one. Acknowledge your fears, your frustrations and your struggles and then deal with them effectively. Now the situation that you, your family and your critically ill loved one are in is not an easy one. In fact, it's a very difficult and challenging situation that you, your family and your critically ill loved one in intensive care are in. I have seen this situation over and over again that families are totally out of their comfort zone, overwhelmed, challenged and frustrated when their loved one gets admitted to intensive care. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay to be frustrated, fearful and vulnerable because you don't know what is about to happen. Most families that I see in intensive care are fearful and scared. In fact, they are usually scared to death and more often than not, they are trying to pretend that they are not scared and that everything is okay. Nothing could be further from the truth and obviously, because I have seen and dealt with families of critically ill patients in intensive care over and over again on an almost intimate level, you get a feel for what is really going on inside of them. So, strategy number one therefore is, it's okay to admit to yourself and to others that you are scared, that you are fearful, that you are frustrated and that you are way outside of your comfort zone. The sooner you admit to yourself that you are overwhelmed and that you might even feel desperation, the better it is for you moving forward and taking the action that you already know you need to take. There is nothing wrong with having those feelings. You are only human. It's not a sign of weakness to have and feel those feelings. I would, however, it would however be a sign of weakness if you were trying to manage this challenging, difficult and once in a lifetime situation all by yourself without seeking for help of the people who know what to do. And it is critically important that you acknowledge and admit those feelings to yourself and to others. 
try not to pretend. Once you have come clear that this is how you feel and how you can show it to others as well, you are in a much better position to deal with those emotions efficiently and you will be able to control and change those emotions. Only after you have come clear that this is the new situation that you, your family and your critically ill loved one in intensive care are dealing with and that this situation is stirring strong emotions inside of you, only then can you start managing those emotions and also change those emotions. Turn a perceived weakness into strength. Don't try to undermine or suppress your emotions. You can feel those emotions and you can and you even should feel those emotions fully because feeling those emotions is a good and a healthy sign. You just can't have those emotions controlling you. Feeling those emotions will only make you stronger and will make you more determined. But if you let those emotions control you, you are doomed. It's true what they say that what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. So acknowledge that this is how you feel and use those emotions to your advantage by changing those emotions into resolve, determination and strength. Let's move on to instant impact number two. Stop putting the intensive care team on a pedestal and don't suck up to them. Over and over again do I see families of critically ill patients showing far too much respect for doctors and for nurses in intensive care to the point where they do suck up to them. Families of critically ill patients in intensive care not only show too much respect for doctors and for nurses and they most of the time suck up to them and put them on a pedestal. Stop doing that and stop doing that right now. It's so critically important that you don't put the intensive care team on a pedestal. I see almost 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care making this big mistake over and over again. And if you are doing this, you are handing over your power on a platter. If you are doing this, then there is almost nothing I can do for you. In fact, if anything, the doctors and the nurses might lose their respect for you if you keep doing it. You might do it unconsciously and you might be unaware of that you are doing it, but stop doing it right now and make friends instead. Most families of critically ill patients in intensive care are so overwhelmed by their emotions that they can't control their emotions and therefore they are feeling weak and that's why they consciously or unconsciously suck up to the doctors and the nurses and by doing that they give away all of their power. So the alternative is to just start talking to them as if they are your friends. Don't see them as a doctor or as a nurse, just start seeing them as your friends. Don't think about that your critically ill loved one's life in intensive care is in their hands. Also act with confidence, speak clearly, be articulate and be clear in what you want as well. If you do just that, if you stop sucking up to the intensive care team, if you stop putting them on a pedestal and if you start talking to them as if they are your friends, you have gone further than most other families in intensive care ever will. By not sucking up to the intensive care team, by being different, by not giving in to the perceived power and the perceived authority of the intensive care team, your level of influence, your level of control and your level of power has increased tenfold. You can literally see the dynamic shift straight away. And as a nice and also important byproduct, you have peace of mind. What goes hand in hand with families sucking up to doctors and nurses and putting them on a pedestal is that some people think, oh, he or she is a doctor or he or she is a nurse, so they must be smart. Now, I don't care what your level of education is. 
but you need to stop thinking that way whatever level of education you have or the doctors or the nurses have it doesn't matter look at the situation differently and know that you your family your critically ill loved one the doctors and the nurses are all in one boat you are all in this together the universe has brought you all together in this particular situation regardless of where you your family your critically ill loved one the doctors and the nurses have come from and regardless of where you are going to just change your point of view look at it differently don't think about the doctors and the nurses as being smart or think that they are any smarter than you are and just look at them as being your friends always remember there are plenty of other things and areas in life where you have tremendous expertise and knowledge about where a doctor or a nurse wouldn't have a clue about you might think Patrick but I don't know anything about intensive care or I don't know enough about my loved one's critical illness so I can't act confident and self-assured now here's the thing you may know you may not know as much as the intensive care team knows about the critical illness of your loved one but you'll be surprised by how much you can find out about your critically ill loved one situation in a short period of time just by asking the right questions and you can find out quickly what questions to ask just by looking at our free or paid resources at, intens at intensivecarehotline.com and just by simply doing your own research you will also be surprised that by just standing out from the crowd and by standing out from other families of critically ill patients in intensive care how much more influence how much more influence power and control you can have during this challenging difficult and frustrating situation once again you will stand out by just acting confident by treating the intensive care team as your friends and by showing them that you are not intimidated by their perceived power and their perceived authority keep asking questions don't make the mistakes of not asking questions and don't assume that the intensive care team will tell you everything that you need to know they simply won't tell you everything you need to know because they are busy people furthermore health professionals in intensive care are like fish in water and therefore they can't always see what questions you might have that are obvious to them because they do it day in and day out and they live and breathe the environment let's look at instant impact number three face reality as it is okay here you are your loved one has just been admitted to intensive care and after the first meeting with the intensive care team you might get told that your critically ill loved one has been severely injured and the intensive care team thinks that your critically ill loved one will not survive their ordeal or you might get other less devastating news but you still get bad news and the intensive care team might tell you that your critically ill loved one is likely to survive their critical illness but they might also tell you that your critically ill loved one might be permanently disabled or might not have the same quality of life than before the admission to intensive care whatever challenging or difficult situation you are in face it it's critically important that you face the situation head on no matter what I know it's a tough call and whatever the situation you don't want to face looks like it's so important for your own and for your family's emotional well-being and sanity in the long term you will of course feel challenged frustrated anxious and vulnerable and if you are in a situation where your critically ill loved one is not going to survive their ordeal in intensive care or where your critically ill loved one's admission to intensive care has a massive negative impact on their future life it is devastating frustrating and challenging without any doubt but the sooner you come clear with what you are dealing with the sooner you also come clear about what it is that you your family and your critically ill loved one need 
and what you need to be doing in this particular and challenging situation. More importantly, as soon as you face reality as it is, you will start actively looking for the right questions to ask that will point you in the right direction of what to do next. This could be as simple as asking what support is available for your loved one after discharge from intensive care and after discharge from hospital. You also need to start questioning the approach of the intensive care team in an end-of-life situation. For example, would your critically ill loved one be better off in a different room or area in the ICU where it's quieter and where they can have more privacy and more dignity? Also, you should be asking for a different doctor or for a different nurse if you feel like your critically ill loved one is not receiving the best possible care. And don't be afraid to do so if you are in doubt. Also, if your critically ill loved one is in an end of life situation and the intensive care team suggests to withdraw treatment or to withdraw life support and you and your family don't agree or don't agree or don't agree as yet or you want more time to think and absorb everything that is happening you should also ask for the intensive care unit's policy about end-of-life care or the withdrawing of treatment policy again don't be afraid of doing that and don't be afraid of speaking up if intensive care teams are ethical and follow the right procedures and processes they will not be hesitating in letting you have access to those policies. By just simply doing that, the power will shift immediately. It's very simple. It's your damn right, if not your responsibility. And hospitals and intensive care units need to be transparent. You want to get as much information as possible. You also want to have as much power, control and impact as possible. It could well be that the intensive care team is trying to pressure you to agree to withdraw treatment or limit treatment on your critically ill loved one. And you are still waiting for some relatives to come in from overseas or from interstate. And you certainly don't want to let your critically ill loved one go without some key family members being around. If that's the case, you need to make that crystal clear to the intensive care team. But before I go off on a tangent here, I need to reel myself back in and come back to our initial point that you need to face reality as it is. And once you have come clear with your emotions, your overwhelm, your frustrations, your vulnerability and your fear, it's time to focus on what you can control. I have given you some hints above on what you can control. Now, 99.9% .9 in life you can't control. If you focus on the 0.1% that you can control and you become a master of what you can control, you are in charge of your own destiny. Let's now look at instant impact number four. Know what you want and be crystal clear about it. To know what you want and to be crystal clear about what you and your family want in intensive care for your critically ill loved one in this challenging and difficult situation can make all the difference to the outcome. That's why it's so important for you, for your family and for your critically ill loved one that you know what you want it's very likely that you and your family will need to make decisions for your critically ill loved one as they are not in a position to make their own decisions. Now, you might say, Patrick, how do I know what I want if I don't even know what the next few hours might have in store? And you are right. If you have come to this video, you are looking for advice, you might not know what the next few hours have in store for you, for your family, and for your critically ill loved one. Intensive care can be a very unpredictable, challenging and volatile environment. How do you actually deal with that? Okay, here's the thing that you need to know. This fourth instant impact strategy 
ties right in with instant impact strategy number one which was acknowledge your fears your frustration and your struggles and then deal with them and it also ties right in with instant impact strategy number three face reality as it is if you haven't watched those strategies or read those strategies go back and read or watch them because they tie right in with this instant impact strategy number four know what you want so after you have acknowledged your fears your frustrations your struggles and you have dealt with them and after you have faced reality as it is and I'm well aware that you your family and your critically ill loved one in intensive care might face a stark reality you need to think clearly about what the best outcome in this particular situation looks like for you for your family and for your critically ill loved one you also need to be specific about the outcomes that you want very few people are specific about the outcomes they want and they keep it too general after you have done the reality check you need to get an understanding and a clear picture of what your critically ill loved one in intensive care might be in for and you need to get an understanding of what your critically ill loved one's prognosis is going to be to do that you can get a lot of free information on this website about most clinical pictures and admission scenarios to intensive care which will be giving you a lot of insight go to the intensive care insights in a nutshell section and find your loved one's condition or admission scenario there or look in the same section for your loved one's treatment in intensive care you also need to listen carefully to the doctors and the nurses pay careful attention to what and how things are said pay also careful attention to what is not being said pay careful attention to the intensive care team's body language and to their tone of voice and most importantly you need to start asking the right question questions this website and our free and paid ebooks videos audio recordings and our tailor-made one-on-one -on -one consulting is giving you a lot of insights of what questions you need to ask you need to listen very carefully though of what is being said and what is not being said and you must start reading between the lines also keep in mind that the medical staff in particular might have a more negative outlook compared to what is really possible and what's really happening for a number of reasons and I'm shedding more light on those reasons in one of my videos and reports about the 10 things you didn't know are happening behind the scenes in intensive care that hold you back from having peace of mind control power and influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care you can find access to that to that video and ebook in our product section also know that when I say that you need to know what you want and you need to be specific about it you need to adapt the what you want to your and your critically ill loved ones particular situation in intensive care I'll give you an example so that you really understand what I mean so let's say your critically ill loved one has just been admitted to intensive care after a severe car accident and your loved one sustained severe head injuries sustained massive rib fractures a broken pelvis and a fractured shin bone your critically ill loved one is 45 years of age and you and the rest of your family are absolutely shocked and devastated the intensive care team has told you that your loved one is extremely unstable not only because of their severe head injuries but also because of the rib fractures that cause difficulties ventilating your critically ill loved one and the fractured ribs also put pressure on your critically ill loved one's heart so that their heart went into an irregular heart rhythm your critically ill loved one also has lost a fair amount of blood due to the severe bleeding from the pelvis some of the blood loss has been replaced by giving blood transfusions now in spite of the fractured pelvis 
enter fractured shin bone. Your critically loved one has not had the pelvis or the shin bone surgically repaired as yet, as your loved one is too unstable to go to theatre for surgery as yet. The intensive care team is working extremely hard to save your critically ill loved one's life. But the scenario that I'm explaining is an extremely difficult and challenging scenario not only from a clinical point of view but also from your and your family's point of view because you just simply don't know what is about to come. It would also be difficult for the intensive care team to exactly predict the future for your critically ill loved one. In order for you to understand and also know what you want in this situation requires an understanding of what might happen in this particular situation that you, your family and your critically ill loved one are in. In this example and in most other situations in intensive care five things may happen. The first thing that can happen is your critically ill loved one is going through a long and burdensome stay in intensive care and is going to fully recover. This usually takes time and may require rehabilitation after the intensive care and hospital stay. The second thing that can happen is your critically ill loved one is going through a long and burdensome stay in intensive care and will be left with some impairments or he or she may be left with a permanent disability. This will take time and may require some out of hospital rehabilitation as well. The intensive care team also thinks that a good quality of life is possible despite the impairment or disability. The third thing that can happen is your critically ill loved one may go through a long and burdensome stay in intensive care and may not recover and pass away within a foreseeable time frame, usually a few days or within the next week. The fourth thing that can happen is your critically ill loved one may become so unwell and unstable because of the severe nature of their injuries that they are rapidly approaching their end of life and their life may be slipping through the fingers of everyone quickly and they may pass away relatively quickly within few hours or a couple of days. The fifth thing that can happen is your critically ill loved one may show signs of slow recovery and stability and the intensive care team thinks that if your critically ill loved one would survive their ordeal in intensive care they would be permanently disabled with the consequences that your critically ill loved one would have no quality of life. This would very likely be a co cause of the severe head injuries. And the intensive care team expects your critically ill loved one to be permanently and severely disabled with no or very little quality of life. Therefore they suggest a withdrawal of treatment might be in the best interest of your critically ill loved one to not prolong your loved one's suffering. I have tried to condense this example and I know that these are grim scenarios in the example that I have used. But if you have watched this far, you are probably in a situation where you need to take a closer look at some of the outcomes. I hope that your, your family's and your critically Ill, Ill loved one's situation is much better than my example. But you can certainly adapt my example to your and your loved one's unique situation learn the right lessons from it and more importantly implement strategies to get what you want without being dependent on the intensive care team's agenda. Your and your family's job in your particular situation is to find out what the future has in store for your critically ill loved one and then get very clear about how you would look the future to look like in your situation irrespective of the odds you might be currently facing. So let's look at possibilities and solutions for each scenario. Also keep in mind before I go into the solutions always think ahead and stay positive no matter what. So let's look at the first outcome in our example where 
your critically ill loved one is going through a long and burdensome stay in intensive care and is going to fully recover. This usually takes time and may require rehabilitation in a rehabilitation facility after the intensive care and hospital stay. So, okay, in our particular scenario and example, with your critically ill loved one in intensive care with severe head injuries, rib fractures and a fractured pelvis, the doctors and the nurses are cautiously optimistic and they think that your critically ill loved one will stay in intensive care for a considerable period of time, maybe a few weeks or maybe even one month or more and they think that your loved one will very likely make a full recovery. That's fantastic news. It will be it will be a long road to recovery, but you are already thinking in your mind that you'll do whatever it takes. That's a great starting point and a good attitude to have. So, your critically ill loved one is very likely facing many weeks of acute and intensive treatment in intensive care with high level nursing care. Your loved one is very likely to require mechanical ventilation and they may require a tracheostomy to facilitate smooth ventilation and your critically ill loved one may require surgery for their pelvis fracture and for their fractured shin bone. The intensive care team is also positive that your critically ill loved one will recover from their severe head injury. Those are the facts and that's great news. Now you and your family can brace yourself for long hours in intensive care, which will cost you time and energy, but once again you are prepared to do whatever it takes and you can make arrangements. So what do you want out of this situation? You are relieved that your critically ill loved one is on their way to recovery and you can foresee that the next few weeks are going to be stressful. Besides. The doctors and the nurses facilitating the treatment and recovery of your critically ill loved one. Are you happy about the treatment and are you happy with how things are handled? Are you happy with how the intensive care team is dealing with you and your family? Are you regularly updated with events and your loved one's progress? Is the intensive care team regularly updating you in family meetings? Do you and your family feel safe and do you feel like your critically ill loved one is in the best possible hands? Do you think that the intensive care team is transparent in their treatment and in their communication with you? If you can confidently answer yes to all of these questions, that's fantastic. If you can't confidently say yes to all of these questions, think again. What can be improved? What can be done better? Is it communication? Is it the level of medical or nursing care? Is it the room or bed space that your critically ill loved one is in? Would there be a better room or bed space for your critically ill loved one to be in? Maybe with more natural daylight once they are more awake. Do you feel like one particular doctor or one particular nurse is not giving your critically ill loved one the attention and the treatment they need? Don't think that because your critically ill loved one is going to recover and because you think that most doctors and nurses are working towards achieving that goal that there aren't things that can't be improved. Also, there are a lot of things happening behind the scenes in intensive care that you are completely unaware of. Those things most likely impact on the time frame and the speed of your loved one's recovery. For example, theatre or surgery time for your loved one may get delayed or cancelled. If that's the case, keep asking why the delay or cancellation and keep pushing and asking. Very few very few families of critically ill patients in intensive care do ask or do push because they are intimidated by the perceived power and by the perceived authority of the intensive care team. And if you do, see what happens and notice the difference. 
you will be miles ahead of the 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who are intimidated by the perceived power and the perceived authority of the intensive care team. Never be afraid and always be courageous. See and find out what you can influence. Don't be afraid. It can and will make all the difference. Always think ahead and never be afraid to speak up. Let's now look at the second part of our example where your critically ill loved one is going through a long and burdensome stay in intensive care and will be left with some impairments or they may be left with a permanent disability. Your critically ill loved one's recovery will take time and may require some out of hospital rehabilitation as well. The intensive care team also thinks that a good quality of life is possible and despite the impairment or disability. Okay, in this particular scenario you have of course hoped for more and for better news and you had hoped and wished that your critically ill loved one would actually make a full recovery. Despite getting the bad news that your critically ill loved one is not going to fully recover, you are of course relieved that your loved one is going to survive as you were obviously very concerned that your critically ill loved one would not survive their ordeal. The doctors and the nurses have told you that your critically ill loved one will need to spend a long time in intensive care and it will take time to get your critically ill loved one out of intensive care. You have taken the good and the bad news in and you are prepared to put up with the long hours in intensive care and you can make arrangements to organize your and your family's life around it. In terms of the impairment your critically ill loved one is facing, the intensive care team has told you that your critically ill loved one will very likely take a long time to be able to walk again. They are concerned that with the severity of the pelvis fracture and the shin bone fracture that your loved one may limp when back on their feet and they may end up with a stiff leg. That's a massive shock for you and for your family, let alone for your critically ill loved one once they are awake. Your critically ill loved one loves being active, loves sport, running and all kinds of other activities. Whilst you and your family are relieved that your critically ill loved one is going to survive, you don't know how to react to those news. What do you do? How do you react? What? can you control in such a situation? It's a difficult question and once again it ties right in with instant impact strategy number one and instant impact strategy number three and you need to stare reality in the eye and you need to acknowledge your fears, your frustrations, your vulnerability and your struggles around this difficult and challenging situation. Once you have done that then you can deal more effectively with the situation at hand. So, your critically ill loved one is facing this disability or impairment once they are out of intensive care. And you and your family, of course, are scared of how your loved one might cope or react to this impairment or disability. What will it mean to your loved one? What will it mean for you and your family? Whilst you can't answer these questions for sure at this point in time, you can certainly think ahead and try and implement strategies so that once your loved one wakes up in intensive care and needs to face the impairment or disability part, that you give them their unconditional love, your full attention and your full support. Know what that looks like. You know your critically ill loved one best and you know what they need and respond to. Make sure that your critically ill loved one gets good physiotherapy and early mobilization. Don't waste any time. The sooner your critically ill loved one will be back on their feet, the better it is and the better and the quicker your loved one will recover and deal with the adversity. Research has shown that people with disabilities, even when diagnosed with paraplegia or quadriplegia, are going back to the same level of happiness happiness than before they have acquired the disability. So be positive and control the things you can control. Also 
don't forget your loved one is alive and that's a great thing. Besides, the intensive care team facilitating the treatment and recovery of your critically ill loved one, are you happy about the treatment and are you happy with how things are handled? Are you happy with how the doctors and the nurses are dealing with you and your family? Are you regularly updated with events and your loved one's progress? Is the intensive care team regularly updating you in family meetings? Do you and your family feel safe and do you feel like your critically ill loved one is in the best possible hands? Do you think that the intensive care team is transparent in their treatment and in their communication with you? If you can confidently answer yes to all of these questions, that's great. If you can't confidently say yes to all of these questions, think again. What can be improved? What can be done better? Is it communication? Is it the level of medical or nursing care? Is it the room or bed space that your critically ill loved one is in? Would there be a better room or bed space for your critically ill loved one to be in, maybe with more natural daylight once they are more awake? Do you feel like one particular doctor or one particular nurse is not giving your loved one the attention and the treatment they really need? Don't think that because your critically ill loved one is going to survive and because you think that most doctors and nurses are working towards achieving that goal that there aren't things that can't be improved. There are a lot of things happening behind the scenes in intensive care that you are unaware of and those things may impact on the time frame and the speed of your loved one's recovery. For example, theatre or surgery time for your loved one may get delayed or even cancelled. If that's the case, keep asking why the delay or cancellation and keep pushing and keep asking. Very few, very few families of critically ill patients in intensive care do ask or do push because they are intimidated by the perceived power and by the perceived authority of the intensive care team. And if you do, see what happens and notice the difference. You will be a million miles ahead of the 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who are intimidated by the perceived power and by the perceived authority of the intensive care team. Very few people do ask or do push, but if you do, see what happens and notice the difference. Don't be afraid and be courageous. See and find out what you can influence. Never be afraid. It can and will make all the difference. So this is the end of the instant impact video number one and I'll see you again in the video number two. See you then.